Hello and welcome back to your own channel Indian Defense Analysis where we bring to you all the latest development happening in the defense sector. Today we are going to discuss few important updates related to Tejas. The first one is related to the indigenous components used in Tejas. Last night DRDO has updated that LSP4 that is limited series production Tejas completed a flight of 1 hour for the first time with indigenous gearbox meeting all performance parameters and stringent limits. The gearbox has been developed from scratch by CVRDE. The second update is related to the making of this MK1A as an electronic warfare fighter. In February 2021, HL and Indian Air Force has signed a deal for 73 Tejas MK1A and 10 Tejas Twin Seat variant. The delivery of Tejas MK1A is planned to be commenced from 2024 onwards. Now, in order to expedite the development of Tejas MK1A, HL has decided to use two FOC version of Tejas MK1 as a test bed. The first test bed of MK1A will take its flight by March 2022 that is next month and the second test bed will take its first flight by end of 2022. HL plans to use two MK1A FTB to prove most of the upgraded technology by mid 2023 so that the first two MK1A get delivered to Indian Air Force by March 2024. HL has planned to equip one of the FOC this variant with Israeli Elta ELM 2052 AESA fire control radar and later Uttam AESA radar. EL 8222WB self protection jammer and DRDO's ASPJ mounted on an external pod. Apart from these, MK1A will incorporate digital radar warning receiver, mission computer, a digital map generator, digital flight control system, Astra, a new beyond visual range air-to-air -air missile and Rudram-1 anti-radiation missile. These components are going to give this MK-1A a capability to operate even as a dedicated electronic warfare fighter just like Growler. As per latest update, the first 16 Tejas MK-1A will feature Israeli ELM-2052 AES radar. From 17th Tejas onwards, that is next 57th Tejas MK-1A will feature Uttam AESA radar with close to 780 ER modules. Uttam is a full solid state gallium arsenide AES radar which is liquid cooled. It features quad band modules that can be stacked to form a larger unit. This makes increasing or decreasing the number of TR modules quite easy in Uttam AES radar depending on fighter jet's nose cone. It has total of 18 modes in air-to-air, air-to-ground and air-to-sea roles. The radar has range well over 120 km and is key to various indigenous developed missiles such as Astra and other guided munitions over long distances. The AES radar has 95% indigenous component with only one imported subsystem. It has the capacity to track 100 targets in the sky at a range in excess of 100 km and engage 4 of them simultaneously. We have seen Uttam AES radar tracking Tejas at 140 km range which is quite significant as Tejas is a very small fighter with RCS of just 0.5 meters square. Tejas is not just a fighter jet but has been developed and designed as a weapon delivery platform from day one. With its versatile weapon package, the fighter is going to be a formidable opponent in air against any Pakistani or Chinese fighter jet. In within visual range, Tejas is already integrated with Russian R-73 and Israeli Python 5 missiles. The integration of MBDS ASRAM missile is in progress and will complete by this year. In summary, it will have three within visual range missile, one from Russia, one from Israel and one from Europe. No aircraft in the world has this capability. 
This is why Tejas is more like a flying weapon. In beyond visual range category, Tejas can fire Israeli IW and its ER versions with range between 50 to 100 kilometers. The indigenous BVR missile Astra MK-1 integration is also progressing with Tejas and is expected to complete by this year. In summary, by this year end, integration of all air-to-air -air missile of Tejas will be complete. Next, we will talk about electronic counter measure pod. Tejas MK-1A will be initially integrated with Israeli Elta ELL. 8222 self protection electronic counter measures pod for enhanced survivability by providing protection against all types of air to air and surface to air threats in a dense radar guided weapon system environment the pods are small lightweight and low drag similar to a structure of an air to air missile and may be installed on outer wing station Simple and flexible mechanical and electrical interfaces allow them to be installed on aircraft of any size. DIDO is also working on an indigenous electronic countermeasure called Advanced Self Protection Jamming Pod or ASPJ. The ASPJ was also shown on the Republic Day tableau of DIDO. It is going to be most advanced version of AESA jamming pod as it will feature a gallium nitride based solid state AESA jammer transmitter along with digital radio frequency measure DRFM. The gallium nitride is a superior semiconductor used in AESA radars compared to gallium arsenide and almost double in power which will undoubtedly increase the effectiveness of the jammer. Next, the DRFM going to be used in jammers are known for severely degrading adversaries, radars and missile seekers. ASPJ is going to be a single pod and is going to be integrated in the upcoming 4.5th and 5th generation fighters such as Tejas MK2, MK and ZBF. The last weapon of Tejas MK-1A which will complete its electronic warfare role is anti-radiation missiles. These missiles are especially designed to be jam-proof and destroy targets radiating radio frequencies such as surface-to-air defense system. DRDO's Rudram-1 anti-radiation missile is in the last leg of its development and its trial can be expected soon. The plan is to complete its development by this year. It will feature a passive homing head PHH seeker which can detect radio frequency emissions from 100 kilometers away. Since it uses passive homing, it only receives and not emits signals making its detection even more difficult. For the terminal stage guidance, the missile uses millimeter wave active radar homing which is quite famous in missile technology to boost the accuracy. Once the Tejas MK-1A is integrated with AESA radar, electronic countermeasure ports and anti-radiation missiles, it will be ready for carrying out threat or suppression of enemy air defense missions. It's very low RCS and heavy use of composite will be added advantage for the fighter as it will be difficult for radars to detect pages. This was today's update. Please let us know what is your views about these in comment section. Feel free to post your comments and suggestions about any topic related to defense sector on which you want to hear from us. With this, I would like to say goodbye and Jai Hind friends. Please like and subscribe our video if you have not done already. We will be soon back with more interesting and amazing development happening in the defense sector.